Let's take a rectangle that has a width of 10 centimeters and a height of four centimeters. Now we're going to draw a second rectangle, which is the same as this one, apart from we're going to double all of the lengths. So we're going to double the width of 10, which would make it 20, and we're going to double the height of four, which would make it eight. Since I've doubled all of the lengths of this shape, we could say that these two shapes are mathematically similar. So shapes are similar if one of them is an enlargement of the other. There are many different ways of drawing shapes that are similar to this original rectangle. We didn't have to double those lengths, we could have tripled them. So if we did that, we'd end up with this rectangle here. The width across the top will go from 10 to 30, since 10 times 3 is 30, and the height would go from 4 to 12, since 4 times 3 is 12. So all of these shapes are mathematically similar to each other. When you enlarge a shape, it doesn't have to increase in size either. It could also decrease. So if we drew this shape down here, where all of the lengths were actually halved. So instead of 10 for the width of the rectangle, we would half 10, which is 5, and instead of 4 for the height, we would half 4, which is 2. So all of these shapes here are mathematically similar to each other, since they're all enlargements of each other. If we return to the original two rectangles we drew, and we're going to change the second one, so instead of 8 for the height, we're going to increase it to 12. These shapes would not be similar to each other. You can see the scale factor of enlargement for the width is 10 to 20, so that must be multiplied by 2, but for the height it's gone from 4 to 12, which is multiplied by 3. So it's important that when you enlarge a shape, if you want it to be similar, you need to multiply all of the lengths by the same number. So we would say that these rectangles are not similar. In exam questions, you're often given two or more shapes. They might be called shape A and shape B. You'll be given the lengths of one of the shapes, and for the other one, you'll have something that's missing. So we've got the height of eight, but we don't know the width. But the question will say that these shapes are mathematically similar. So we know that one of them is an enlargement of the other one. To work out how much it's been enlarged by, we find two of the sides that we do have information for. So I can see here we have the height of both of these rectangles. So to get from the height of four to the height of eight, I've multiplied by two. This means the scale factor of enlargement is two. So to get from the width of nine to the missing value here, I must also multiply by two if these shapes are similar. Nine multiplied by two is 18. So the missing width here would be 18 centimeters. Let's try a second example. So this time we're going to have triangle A and triangle B. And we're given these dimensions for shape A and these ones for shape B. So the question will tell us that these shapes are mathematically similar. This means we know that one of them must be an enlargement of the other one. So looking at all of the lengths of the sides, I can see the five here matches with the 15. On the bottom, I've got the Y matching with the 18. And on the right, I've got a seven matching with an X. I only have both of the values in one of those pairs. That's the blue pair from five to 15. So I can work out what I multiply five by to get to 15 to find the scale factor. So this time five multiplied by three is 15. So the scale factor must be three. This means I need to multiply all of the sides on A by three to get the sides on B. So I could multiply this seven by three to work out what X is. And seven multiplied by three is 21. So we now know that X was 21. And since the scale factor is three, I could multiply Y by three to get to 18. But this doesn't help me find Y, I need to go in the opposite direction. So I need to start at 18 and go back to Y. So instead of multiplying by three, I would divide by three. 18 divided by three is six. So we know the answer for y is six centimeters. Let's try another question. So for this one, we've got two shapes, shape A and shape B, and these dimensions here. So we're going to look at matching up the sides again. On the top, we have an eight and four. On the right hand side, we have a y and a three. And on the bottom, we have a 15 and an x. So the only pair here where we have both bits of information is the eight and the four, the blue pair. So how do we get from eight to four? Well, this is divide by two, it's been halved. So to get from 15 to x, I must also divide by 2. 15 divided by 2 is 7.5. Now to get to y, I need to go in the other direction from this 3 back to the y. Since I'm going in the opposite direction, I'll use the inverse operation. So instead of dividing by 2, I'll multiply by 2. 3 multiplied by 2 is 6. So the value of y was 6. In this question, the scale factor from shape B to shape A is 2. Since when I go from shape B to shape A, I double all of the lengths. But what about the scale factor of enlargement from shape A to B? You might think it might be two as well, or possibly negative two, but that's not the case. When we do a scale factor of enlargement, we must multiply by some number. We can't divide. We use divide by two to help us solve this question, but that isn't the scale factor. 
So let's remove those divide by 2s and think about what we multiply 8 by to get to 4. To get from 8 to 4, you're going to half it. So this is the same as multiplying by 1 half. So the scale factor from A to B is actually 1 half. Now let's try another example. So in this question here, we have two shapes A and B and these dimensions. Once again, we'll look for pairs of lengths that match. On the right hand side here, I've got an 8 and a 12. On the top of the shape, I have a 6 and an X. And on the left hand side there, I have a Y and a 6. The only pair here that I have both bits for is the blue one again, so I need to work out how to get from 8 to 12. This one's not as obvious because 12 isn't in the 8 times table. So to work out what we multiply 8 by to get to 12, I'm going to do 12 divided by 8. On my calculator, this would give me the answer 1.5. This means I must have multiplied 8 by 1.5 to get to 12. So the scale factor from shape A to B is 1.5. This means I can work out the purple one by doing 6 multiplied by 1.5, and 6 lots of 1.5 is 9. I can also work out the green one by going in the opposite direction, so this time I would divide by 1.5. 6 divided by 1.5 is 4, so y was 4. So far, when looking at similar shapes, we've only looked at what happens to the sides, but we also need to look at what happens with the angles. So if we take this shape here, and we label this length as 10 centimeters, and then we draw one that's twice as big, so this length will now be double that to 20 centimeters. So we know the sides are all going to double, but what happens to the angles? Well, let's measure this angle here. If we go around the outside scale here, we can see that this angle is about 68 degrees. Let's measure the same angle on the other shape, so this one here. And once again, if we go around, it's about 68 degrees. So even though we made this shape twice as big, the angle actually didn't change. Both of these angles here are measured at the same value of 68 degrees. This applies to all of the angles. So both of these angles are 80, both of these are 140, and these two are both 112. So when you enlarge a shape, the angles stay the same. So we could say that similar shapes have the same size angles. Now let's have a look at what some exam questions look like. We're going to start with this one here, where we have two shapes like this, and we're asked some questions about them. So we're told that triangles A, B, C, and D, E, F are similar. This means that we know one of them is a scale factor enlargement of the other one, and you can see that the shape DEF is definitely bigger than ABC. The first question says to write down the scale factor of enlargement from ABC to DEF. So to do this, we're looking for some sides that match. I can see we've got this 15 and this 21 here on the top of both of them, so I can use these to work out the scale factor. So how do I get from 15 to 21? Well again, this is one where 21 is not in the 15 times table, so I'll do 21 divided by 15 to work out the scale factor. 21 divided by 15, using your calculator, is 1.4. So the scale factor is 1.4. For the second question, we're asked to work out the length of DF. That's this length here. To work this out, we need to work out the length of the same side on the smaller shape. So that's this 6 cm line here, from A to C. We already know the scale factor is 1.4, so we need to multiply 6 by 1.4 to work out what DF is since all of the sides have been multiplied by 1.4 to get from ABC to DEF. So we do 6 multiplied by 1.4, which is 8.4. For the third part of the question, we need to work out the length of CB, which is this line here. The one that matches with this on the other shape is this one, EF, at 14 centimeters. Now since we're going from DEF back to ABC this time, we would divide by the scale factor. So we would do 14 divided by 1.4, which gives us 10. So CB is 10. And for the final part of this question, it says work out the size of angle DFE. Angle DFE is this angle here. We know that since the shapes are similar, the angles must remain the same. So that will be the same as the angle on the shape above at 138 degrees. So the answer is 138 degrees. Sometimes exam questions ask you to show that shapes are similar, or they could ask you to show they're not similar. So if we take these two triangles here, the question might say, show that these two triangles are similar shapes. To show they're similar, we need to show that there's a scale factor of enlargement that applies to all of the pairs of sides. So let's look at the pairs we've got. We've got the hypotenuse of this right angle triangle here, that's 32.5 and 13 for the smaller one. We've got the height on the left hand side at 12.5 and 5, and the base is 30 and 12. So there must be the same scale factor of enlargement between all of these pairs. So let's start with the blue pair and do 32.5 divided by 13, which gives you 2.5. If it's similar, this must be the same for all of the other pairs. So if we do the green pair, we've got 12.5 divided by 5, which is also 2.5, so 
and the purple one, 30 divided by 12, which is also 2.5. So we can see since we had the same scale factor every time, these shapes must be similar. If the scale factor was different for any of the pairs, then it wouldn't be a similar shape. So we can write a concluding statement by saying the shapes are similar as all of the sides are enlarged by the same scale factor, which was 2.5. Thank you for watching this video, I hope you found it useful. Check out the one I think you should watch next, subscribe so you don't miss out on future videos, and go ahead and try the exam questions on this topic that are in this video's description.